Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and today I'm going to talk briefly about the anatomy of the liver. The liver is the largest internal organ in the body. It's about 1.4 kilogram in an average adult, a bit heavier than the brain. And of the organs of the body, it is the second in size only after the skin. The liver is wedge-shaped, and you can see that here also in a section, it is wedge-shaped, and it is located below the diaphragm. This is the right dome of the diaphragm, and the, here is the left dome. You can see that most of the liver is located on the right side, and because of that, the right dome of the diaphragm is higher than the left dome. The liver is located in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. abdomen. If you divide the abdomen into four quadrants, and if the abdomen is divided into nine regions, then the liver occupies most of the right hypochondrium and extends into the epigastrium and sometimes even a little bit into the left hypochondrium. As you can see here, the liver is related to the lower ribs. You can see that here also in section. It is located in the abdominal cavity, but because the uh, diaphragm has domes, then the liver is enclosed by the lower ribs. And this makes the liver vulnerable to be torn in lower rib fractures. Also, when a biopsy is taken from the liver, the ribs are used as a landmark. So in liver biopsy, usually the needle is inserted into the right 10th intercostal space in the mid-axillary line. The liver has a smooth and dome-shaped diaphragmatic surface, and it has a sharp inferior border. You can see the fundus of the gallbladder appearing from beneath the sharp inferior border of the liver. This inferior border of the liver separates the smooth diaphragmatic surface from the visceral surface of the liver. You can see here that the visceral surface of the liver has some bumps and depressions, and these are produced only in embalmed livers. When the liver becomes firm after embalming, so it takes the imprint of the surrounding structures. The inferior border of the liver is level with the costal margin and may be felt or palpated below the costal margin during deep inspiration when the diaphragm pushes the liver down. The liver is soft and highly vascular and is surrounded by a fibrous capsule called glycine's capsule as well as the peritoneum. And the peritoneum is reflected from the liver to form folds and ligaments like for example here the falciform ligaments which connect the liver to the diaphragm and the anterior abdominal wall. The attachment of the falciform ligament to the anterior surface of the liver divides the liver into right lobe and left lobes and you can see that the left lobe of the liver looks smaller than the right lobe. This is anatomically speaking. If you look at the visceral surface of the liver again, you can see that there are two small lobes here, which are not shown on the diaphragmatic surface. These are called the caudate lobe superiorly and the quadrate lobe inferiorly. Obviously, the quadrate lobe is quadriangular in shape. And the caudate lobe, we can see it here better, this is the caudate lobe again. The caudate lobe has a small tail that connects it with the remaining of the right lobe of the liver. That's why it's called the caudate lobe. Coda means tail. These two lobes, they functionally, they belong to the left lobe of the liver, and thus the liver can be divided into equal right lobe and left lobe, functionally speaking. You can see here that the visceral surface of the liver also shows that there is a transverse sulcus, and this is an area where structures pass in and out of the liver. This is called the hilum of the liver. Three main structures are located here. The largest of these structures is the portal vein, and then we have the hepatic artery and the bile duct. The portal vein brings blood to the liver, so as the hepatic artery, but the blood that is brought by the portal vein is nutrient-rich, oxygen-poor, and that that is brought by the hepatic artery is oxygen-rich. You can see that most of the blood, 75% of the blood, as revealed by the size of the vessel, 75% of the blood that reaches the liver is through the portal vein, and it contains the nutrients that has just been absorbed from the intestine. This is the portal vein reaching the liver. You can see how the portal vein is formed by a splenic vein and a superior mesenteric vein. Then there is an inferior mesenteric vein that usually joins the splenic vein. Also, there are veins joining the portal vein from the stomach. It means that all the blood, venous blood, uh, that is going to be drained from the gastrointestinal tract, distal to the esophagus, is going to reach the liver before it reaches the 
systemic circulation. And because there is a lot of blood reaching the liver from multiple resources, the liver becomes a common site of metastasis of tumors from organs drained by the portal system. In cases of liver disease that results in narrowing of the branches of the portal vein within the liver, this results in what we call portal hypertension. So some of the blood reaching the liver will pass retrogradely through the portal vein and try to reach the, the systemic circulation through other routes. So some of this blood will pass through the veins that drain the stomach. This is the left gastric vein, which is located on the lesser curvature of the stomach. It not only supplies the stomach as its name indicates, but also supplies the lower part of the esophagus. So if this is the esophagus, then the lower part of the esophagus can drain to the portal circulation. These portal tributaries also anastomose with tributaries that drain the middle third of the esophagus to the systemic circulation, and they terminate into the superior vena cava. When there is increased pressure in the portal circulation, these veins draining the lower part of the esophagus will become dilated and tortuous and they can be seen through the mucous membrane in the submucosa because there is a lot of blood trying to bypass the liver by going back to the esophagus and joining the veins that drain to the systemic circulation. And this results in what we call esophageal varices, which is a very dangerous condition because these these submucosal veins, they can easily be injured and result in a very severe bleeding. Some of these portal tributaries can also communicate through the falciform ligament, which we mentioned at the beginning. They communicate with the umbilicus on the anterior abdominal wall. The anterior abdominal wall drains to the systemic circulation, either upwards or downwards. And again, whenever there is increase in pressure in the portal circulation, these veins that communicate with the umbilicus will become dilated and tortuous because they can carry the blood through the anastomosis to the systemic circulation bypassing the liver so these veins will become dilated and radiate away from the umbilicus can be seen under the skin and present as a clinical sign called caput medusi the medusa head <laughs>